Now here is an interesting lamp. I got this on eBay, it seemed unusually cheap, but it turns out that the listings that have more sales, the price has gone up. So it's obviously aiming to get sort of feedback and then the price goes up according to demand. And it's made by a company called Sansi. It's an LED lamp, but the most interesting thing is it has a ceramic substrate. And I was thinking initially that, you know, they were just basically, it was hype. But no, it's a very interesting lamp that looks as though, as though it's designed for long life. And they've got loads of other types of lights designed for the hydroponic industry and for coloured illumination that use a similar approach of the ceramic, but interesting shapes of ceramic. I've ordered more lights. It's got loads of ventilation. And I don't know if you're going to see this. I'll pop the lid off anyway. I don't know if you're going to see what's in there, but there's a big fat capacitor in there. Like, really ridiculously big capacitor. And looking through the grill, it is only rated 3.3 microfarad at 400 volts, but it's enormous, much bigger than normal, suggesting this is actually designed to last a long time. I suppose time will tell. Here is my Chinese lamp tester. I shall move that little thing out the way before it avalanches onto the bench. Let's turn the power on and stuff it into the holder. So it is cold white and is displaying... Uh, 14, 14 14.7 watts, quite bright, I have to say, it is cold white, uh, 5,000 degrees Kelvin, I think it is, Sansi, uh, dots in the vision, 5,000 K, 1,600 lumens, let's put this out of the way, and see if we can open it, this is where things are going to get tricky, because, uh, the, the plastic cover in the front that holds it together has been pushed down through the cover, and it really, it, I think it's a one-way trip. I don't think this is going to come out easily. Oh, that is very flexible plastic. So I'm going to try and get that under there. No, this is not going to come out easily, is it? And also, they've got a little lip here to stop you getting down under here. This is going to be destructive. I think I'm going to have to dremel this off. I will dremel it off. One moment, please. The dremeling has been done. Let's uh, go inside. It's worth mentioning they really don't want this coming out. The little tabs in there also have ratchet uh, bits on them so it really doesn't come out. So hopefully now this should be ready to undo. Is that glue as well or is it just because it's stuck with me dremeling? I think it's just because it's with me dremeling. Here is the ceramic insert. Let me zoom down this just so we can see, see it closer. Um... Uh, if I take this off and I reach in and snip those wires in there, we can get this out closer. I will probably take a picture of it so we can take a closer look. Things worthy of note, though. This is ceramic, but they've actually got tracks on it. Interesting, they've got a layer. Is this printed ink? That would make sense uh, because... Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll take a picture of this, but look at this capacitor. That is 3.3 microfarad, 400 volts. Oh, is it 33 microfarad? It's 33 microfarad, 400 volt. That's why it's uh, so big. That explains it. That's also going to be super unripply because that is much higher than average. It's got two linear current regulator chips. Right, tell you what, I'll take a picture of this and we can examine it closer. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is done. Let's explore. The supply comes on. And goes through this 4.7 ohm resistor to the bridge rectifier. We've got the smoothing capacitor off board. And then we've got the two linear current regulators as expected. The LED configuration is unexpected. There are four sections of LEDs. Interestingly, if you look at this strange track here, the inner circle jumps out to that LED and then back in again. And it also does it over here to allow for the difference in the number of LEDs around the diameter. So they all have the same number of LEDs and there are effectively four circuits. Um, the material itself, the ceramic, it's unusually thick. I wonder why they made it so thick. I should zoom down onto this, shouldn't I? It, sh it would be better if I got a little bit closer, although it is quite big. Why did they go so thick? Is this for strength? Because normally it's not the mass of a heat sink that matters. It's actually the surface area of it. But I'm guessing that this is basically just designed to facilitate taking the heat from the LEDs uh, quickly and then just give a decent surface area for it to go. Um, I'm surprised at the weight and thickness. I mean, this is a chunky, heavy piece of ceramic. Now, I'm guessing it's alumina ceramic. It could also be 
aluminium nitride, but it's not beryllium oxide. Well, I hope it's not beryllium oxide. There are many ceramics you can use. The tracks, I don't think they're copper. I think these are laser sintered on, because that seems to be a common approach in manufacturing, where they might possibly put a layer of uh, the metallization onto the ceramic and then selectively fuse it on, or they may have a laser beam dancing about and uh, actually inject a fine uh, spray of the metal particles into it to actually get bonded on. Not sure what approach they use for this. It's quite an odd thing. It's notable that that's probably why I don't think it's going to be as strong as the copper approach. And that's possibly why they've added this circuit board here. So that they can then effectively hand solder on the capacitor, the nice generous capacitor, and the electrical connections. Um, anything else worth mentioning? The programming resistors, they've allowed positions for two. They've also allowed other positions for resistors associated with the PM2013 chip, which... Uh, they're not using this instance, but they've included them. And there's various things about this design that suggest that it is really full-on professional, really. I think it really is aiming at the market of high-output devices for hydroponics and other things. There is a hack you could do to this if you could get access to the PCB to half the power dissipation, and that is just to cut that track there. And that would effectively remove one of these regulators because the two of them are in parallel. I shall show you the schematic, and it will clarify the circuitry. I think I've covered just about everything there. Let's zoom down this. It is not really that surprising. Um, it's very typical of a linear regulator LED lamp. We've got a 4.7 ohm resistor in rush limiter, uh, and also fusible resistor. Uh, we've got the bridge rect fire, we've got the fat, juicy, 33 megafarad death beam 400 volt capacitor, and two... 240k resistors across that. Did I point them out before? They are two in series for the correct voltage rating. Other things worth mentioning. The track uh, has a link across here to jump the negative track over the positive track. They've used a really huge uh, surface mount link to allow a good clear passage underneath to avoid tracking on the circuit board, which is very good professional design. The LEDs, there are 17 six-chip LEDs I calculated and then tested one of the LEDs to make sure it was, giving a voltage roughly of about, uh, well, let's see, that would be 102 LEDs, roughly 300 volts across the LEDs, and that might sound quite a lot, but keep in mind that on the 220 to 240 supply that particular lamp is aimed at, the voltage will be in the hovering in the region of 300 to 300-ish volts. So that's acceptable, but they can fine-tune that by... Effectively, and they do these this in some products, you'll get the six chip for LEDs most of them, but then they'll slot in maybe a two or one chip uh, package just to actually nudge or tweak the voltage. I didn't see that obviously, but then I didn't measure the voltage across every single LED. Uh, the two regulators are in parallel. The dotted lines here are replicated in this one as well, but the these components are not in use. They are for... Let me see if I can find the data sheet for that. I'll have to zoom out for this. This is the PM Power Micro um, chip. And it's basically, it's got the two ground connections. It's got the drain for the MOSFET inside, which is used to, to control the current through LEDs. And then it's got the current sense, but it also has a PCR input. The data sheet was in Chinese. I couldn't quite work out what that was for. It was a bit vague. A couple of resistors uh, there that they've included the positions for them on the circuit board, but not used them. But it looks as though it may be for controlling the current sense. You can dim it or control step up and down. I'm not sure. It seems to be an extra layer of control in that way, but it was very vague. And that is it. So there are two ways you could do with this lamp. You could basically, the one I was talking about there, is just cut one of these lines, and then that just means it's a single current regulator, so it would be half the power to the LEDs. Uh, the other is to put the capacitor in series uh, over in the input uh, to dubi it, usually with a discharge resistor across it too. Um, but it might not be needed. That would just be for if you wanted some fanciful application, you wanted a lamp that lasts forever because this looks pretty robust. Other advantages of the ceramic are a very low uh, thermal efficient coefficient of expansion, which might suit the LEDs better, perhaps. It doesn't expand much of the heat like some of the other materials do. So it may put less stress in the hot LEDs. Uh, and that is it. It's an interesting lamp. 
not waterproof in any stretch of the imagination. I wonder how absorbent this ceramic would be of moisture. Not sure. But tons of ventilation. That's kind of why it's not going to be great for uh, waterproof applications. Not that many lamps are above festoon lighting. And when this is on and it sandwiches down onto the circuit board, it's got this port through the middle for ventilation for air to basically flow in from the bottom and out here or vice versa, depending on its orientation. So it does look like it's designed for good insulation with the ceramic and also uh, for good thermal dissipation, although it does basic. I don't think it couples well onto the plastic case. It is relying purely on the heat flowing around the ceramic substrate. But that is a very, very interesting lamp. It's not one I've seen before. Very impressive. Very neat indeed.